Hey guys, welcome into the Poker Reborn channel. Today we're going to be looking at Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Infantry, Basic, Slash, Some Advanced uh, Strategies. Not all strategies are going to be put into this guide just for the simple fact that there are a lot of individual strategies for different unit types. For instance, the Medic, Multiple Engineer Classes, the Sniper, Officer, and so on. I'm going to do smaller videos for them so they're easier to digest. This is going to be more of a video about how to actually move your units, how to to, uh, understand like the foliage and how to understand like how they can help other tanks other artillery and uh, also I know the one that a lot of people ask about is the third person first person how do you do that so if you do want to get to a specific guide within this one uh, you can always check that in the timestamps below if you do like this type of content please hit the like so you can show me that you want to see more videos like this without further ado let's get into it Right, for starters guys we're just going to look at some of the basic infantry here before we get into the actual movements and all little little details right so today i am using the germans i do like the pioneer squad to start if you are doing a, a grand campaign they are awesome in terms of the early game they have a wide array of different units that you can pick from and while we're not going to go over every single unit uh there are these ranges where you have guys like this with the submachine gun uh of course putting them in corners which we'll show in a little bit a very good not so much the long range we do have the mgs we have an at weapon it's kind of like a rifle that can take out tracks it can pierce uh, light to mid armor it's very uh very very good for tactical situations uh there is a lot of micromanaging in this game just as a heads up if you are newer so to be able to use them effectively they, they can do it all on their own but it's really good to understand where you're setting your guys up you have yourself the bolt action rifles you have a semi-automatic rifle that's good for mid especially uh the you know of course bolt actions can be a little longer range uh there are other units that we'll go over in a different video like snipers and so on and uh kind of give their movement patterns and so on yeah but yeah so we have this flamethrower guy one of uh one of the more fun units to use but i think that there's a lot of tactical things that you can do with this guy to make it more effective and we'll go over that in a little bit as well so why don't we start with some of the movements now if we're going to get into the basics the real basics of infantry for starters you have yourself a squad right when you click all of them you're going to get a squad icon at the top if I click off, you're going to see it still stays here. Now, if I want to grab every one of these guys instead of drag click, I can just straight up click right here, get the whole squad. Down in the corner as well, if I'm off clicked, right down here in the corner is going to be your squad. You can click on that. You'll have all your boys ready to go. Uh, now, if you want to do like a single group, you just grab the one, grab a few. You know, they can be individual soldiers as well which is really nice, obviously, uh, when things get crazy. You also have your grouping of each soldier and what they are. So you have your MG, like we talked about before. you got your uh, semi-automatic, your bolt action, and you have your flamethrower. Now, again, when we have them all grouped together, there's a few things that you're going to want to know. Um, if, you hold, if you press R, you only have to press it once, and you left-click to a direction. This is rotating your players. As you can see, the view, see how we can see this fog of war here? We go like this, are the look in that direction. Something that might help you out if you're just kind of establishing something, uh, an area, what you can do is you can grab a few soldiers, have them look north, south, east, west, all that stuff, right? So now you have a wide range of view. And this is vastly important because when you're in the woods, especially, I purposely picked this map because there are some more open areas. And of course we have the woods, we have a bunch of foliage here and hiding spots. I say hiding spots because if I grab a soldier, I can actually hide in the bushes. Now that's gonna be more advanced stuff here in a bit, but back to the basics. So if I grab this soldier right here, the flamethrower guy, and I, so I drag and click or I just, left click a guy you can grab your soldier if i just click once he will just kind of do like a, a little bit of a jog now if i double click he'll start running okay next portion of this would be pressing alt now alt makes it so that he drops to one knee 
This is great for coverage, uh, but you're gonna have to manually do this unless you get to a spot where, like this log, as you can see, he is just based on how it's looking here, the little shadow outline of him. If I double click, he'll run to it and then he will use it as cover. Sometimes, depending on how low the actual cover is, he will lay down, it'll actually show you that. Other times if the cover's high, of course, he'll stand. You can judge that too. Once he gets to the spot, press Alt, stand up, Alt, get down to one knee. Now, one thing that's really important as well is control. Control makes it so, this guy wants to do it here, lay down, right? You can use that as cover, Gonna jump over the log, lay down. Might not lay down in the water. All right, he doesn't lay down in the water, but it's gonna mess up the whole video. <laughs> but yeah, so you can press control and they'll drop to the ground. Now, the reason that this is important, of course, is because if you're under fire by a tank, let's say all of a sudden you're under fire, they're, you know, they're in the woods, you're getting shot at, boom, everybody gets down, much harder to hit as you can imagine, so on. If the coast isn't quite clear, but you want better shots, have them drop to the one knee or come up to one knee, or again, press control again or alt again, and they will stand. All right, so that's pretty much like the, the more basic movements here. Now, this is the one that I think most people need to know. This is, this is if you're new to this game, you need to know this. Everybody wants to know how you do first person view. So I have my soldier here, right? Let's say there's somebody behind those trees and he's just having a horrible time shooting them. If I press E on my keyboard, I can start looking around. I can get ready to fire. I can zoom in. See how crappy the camera is though? Some people like this free shooting just because they, you know, from a top view, you can see like, oh, he's gonna hit that tree, right? That's where the guy is. It's a quick way to do it. But if you want to get more first person or third, or well, third person, not first, you press T. T will bring you in to right behind the soldier, more reactive, moving around. So as I'm moving around, I can zoom in. I use my scroll wheel. I can zoom in and out. With snipers, you actually get right into the scope. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of, a lot of cool little integral things. And so if you see where the crosshairs are, there's a little circle. And that circle is the range at which I fire. When I fire, the bullets will fire within that range. So obviously, as you can see up close, you're gonna be hitting your target pretty easily. But from a, from a distance, it's just gonna be spread out all over the place. And the more you shoot, it gets wider. Now these are obvious things, of course, that everybody knows, right? So, and the controls still, I mean, as you can imagine with an SMG. But uh, if I press Alt, drop to one knee, Alt again, stand up, Control, lay down, Control, stand up. Uh, the next thing that is helpful is, you notice how I'm just jogging right now? Jogging, obviously now he's, I'm gonna be like a walk here. Pull out, now he's jogging. If I hold down shift, I can start running. Just like any other game, you know, usually shift is to run. Come up to the log, take a knee, under fire, lay down. Lay down, buddy. There we go. And now you're behind cover. Um, I had to take a second there to remember this one. I knew it was one of the Fs here, but if I go F8, he'll heal himself. Uh, if I press R or Y, that's Y. So the game has it set up as Y for re reload. Uh, I changed it, so I had to go back and see. I didn't want to mess you guys up, but Y is to reload. So fire, Y, reload. Uh, in first person, I like to use R, you know, R, reload, you know, like most most games that you see, but of course there's other key bindings and stuff. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is really your, your general basics here. Um, and I'm going to now, let's get out of this view for a second here. Actually, if you want to get out of this whole thing, E is to get out of that. And then we'll start going into more of the, uh, the more advanced stuff here. All right, guys, so now we're gonna be looking at some of the advanced tactics. And I wanna say this real quick, is that we're not gonna be looking over every unit today in terms of what they do. I'm just gonna be giving you some tactics that can help you on the battlefield or better understand uh, your men. 
and so stay tuned for videos in the future like snipers medics and so on uh the engineers because i will give you guys a rundown on those as well so so keep an eye out for that uh, without further ado i think that the most important thing you need to understand right now is the foliage and your infantry infantry can only see so far obviously right now as i'm running this unit out i can see out into the woods and while it seems all fun and dandy and stuff or fine and dandy you'll you will notice in game that even though you're running through the woods and you have this clear line of sight there is a lot of obstacles in the way all these trees all the bushes and so on can hide soldiers and you need to be able to adapt to that so what i like to do is i like to get my infantry in these bushes as they start moving up now this could be a lot of micromanaging and i understand that but the beauty of having all this all these woods and i'll show you right here we'll grab a bunch of guys run them in is that you can actually put them all in a bush or by the bush or something maybe there's a guy that's going to be exposed a little bit but you can micromanage that i mean if you want to micromanage that portion of it but this will try to keep them inside of the bush and then as units are running past as they start to run past uh, they will see glimpses of soldiers running through or if there's enough eyes in that area you'll be able to see the soldiers coming towards you or they'll come up as little red blimps on the screen uh, the little mini map up here so keep the forest or any bush because you might have an open field where there's only a few bushes and what you'll do is you run your guy over there have them press alt have them crouch or have them lay down as this guy is standing here if he's crouched he still has a good view now one of the issues that will come across excuse the phone there uh one of the issues that will come across is that they're not looking in the right direction so what you're going to do again are you're going to left click into the direction you want them to look now this is where we get into all the things you need to know about the actual units itself down at the right hand corner of the screen you have your fire rate you have your movement mode you have their chant their stance which we went over earlier you have uh, attack options you have yourself item options special options cancel which is f if you ever want to cancel what they're doing r for rotate we already went over that and of course uh, your emplacement options first thing we need to look at is the fire mode this is incredibly important because if you're trying to scout an area and you don't want them just firing at everything, you don't want to give up your position, right? You're trying to make it so that you can see in the woods. You might not want them to actually know where you're at. Last thing you need is a light unit running through a light vehicle of some sort or any type of vehicle at that matter. And they're running through and you don't want them to see your men by them just shooting. What you can do is you can change the fire mode. There's three fire modes. So there's firing, fire at will. There's hold fire, which they won't fire at all, even if they get shot at. And then finally, there's return fire. So they only shoot if they're getting shot at. One of the tactics that I use a lot, a lot in this game, there isn't a match that I don't use this, is I will take a soldier, like this one, and I will have him run out into the woods, and I will put him in a bush somewhere. And I'll have him look in a general direction. So if I want him to look over here, R, and I'll click. Now he's checking out this whole side of the forest. My other soldiers are hanging back. Because if this guy does get fired at, for one, I don't have it set to fire at will. So people run in through, he won't just shoot at them. I don't, I ha I don't have it set to not firing at all. I Usually I don't pick not firing at all unless I'm trying to scout an area. Uh, which, again like scouting at a base of some sort like this but it's very rare i usually only use the return fire or firing at will but return fire is great because again he'll he'll protect himself you'll see a little blimp on the mini map showing you that there is a, a fight going on but yeah i'll just keep him over here again i'll alt to keep him crouched so he still has a good line of view he's not laying down where the the terrain because this is huge too see the terrain how it's yeah it's not completely bumpy or it's not completely flat it's bumpy this is going to make it harder to see as you can see this is what the view of the soldiers getting they're not getting this view they're only getting the up close so i like to have them at least crouch some places you have to lay them down just you'll have to be the judge on the terrain because terrain is massive in this game 
So now that he's here, again, that I'm scouting. There's another thing that you can do as well. Instead of scouting a little bit at a time and moving your guys up into new bushes and having them look, uh, one of the reasons you want to scout or have them go ahead is because of situations like this. Let's turn this truck off real quick here. So we have ourselves our mortar team. And what I like to do with mortar teams, well, not even with mortar, anytime you have a mortar team, this is what you're kind of doing here. But looking off into the distance, as you can see, the as I turn this thing, you can see the fog, the, the shadow of war going away. But again, foliage, a lot of stuff in the way. These these placements can be gr can be a great thing and a terrible thing. Soldiers can't see you, but you can't see them. So yeah, I can fire onto the woods because I saw a blimp, but that doesn't mean I'm actually going to hit anything, okay? So what I like to do is I like to have my scout soldier, which I had already set up here. Let's say we have a bunch of men in this base here, right? And I can't quite get close enough. I'm having trouble getting close enough. What I can do is switch my firing mode to only fire it if I get shot at. I can actually lay him down and he'll crawl over here and which makes him harder to see and now you can see that I have a general eye on the base itself and so this this team right here is like okay thanks for letting me see we know that there's a placement of soldiers right here you can see because of that light circle exactly where it's gonna go fire boom I just killed some guys they're panicking they're starting to bring soldiers my way I can see them before they see me and it's all thanks to that soldier it's not that your it's not that your equipment can't fire that far because it can it's the issue of line of sight mortar teams are not meant to be right up in the in the thick of the battle they need to be able to see what they're shooting at and if they're if AI will do it themselves but without this without this look I don't have that pure vision of where this of where the enemy is I'm just kind of guessing like oh you know look how far this thing can shoot I can shoot all the way to the flag you see all the trees in the way which are going to cause you could hit it boom hit the flag so keep that in mind scouting your soldiers out is really really important but also their stance is massively important because again the terrain terrain can change everything all right so now that that's out of the way going over those things this is also good for tanks you know as well i brought a tank into the into play here but uh yeah so Next thing, let's look at the other modes here. Movement mode. If you have a soldier going somewhere to like a bush, you know, he's not gonna run from this spot. He will stay here. He's not gonna chase anything. He's not gonna get caught up. He's not gonna look for better cover. If, let's say I'm behind this cover right here. Uh, I don't wanna get up. I don't wanna get into the base. Let's go like, it's pretty cool too. See, some of the covers have them laying down. They do like a shadow outline of what it's gonna look like. So he lays down, right? Let's say there's a, a grenade, or not a grenade, like so, some artillery of some sort hits this, blows away the cover. The soldier will stay there, out in the open. He won't move, he won't do anything else. If you have this mode off, move at will. They will move as needed. Now you might say that sounds great, but not all the time, because if they get into a position where they're chasing someone, or, or something happens where they're just, you know your soldiers all here now they're all spread out or they're doing something different because of the situation it can be good it can be bad and this is where some of the micromanaging comes into hand i find myself not using it much because i i don't know i'm i don't need them to have the free will of movement i, I if they die it's you know it's it's just a lot of micromanaging if you can make it work do it so let's go to some of these other things here. Of course, our stance, as we already went over. Control is to stand up, lay down. Alt is to get them on one knee or to stand up all the way. Next one would be your firing options. Firing options is pretty much right down here at the bottom of the screen, right central bottom. If I press F1, you can see how far away. See, he, he can only, once you hit red, you can't throw it that far. I can throw it at 22 from where he's at. He chucks it, boom. This, you, I feel like, I don't know how the community reacts to like grenades and stuff, if they like to do that on their own, but I'm telling you right now, grenades, uh, you will get a group of soldiers and you can kill a mass amount of them, throw them into buildings, so on. Uh, 
it's night and day how important that can be like it's crazy uh, de definitely use these abilities smoke is one of the strongest things in the game as well in my opinion uh, if there is a tank I've had it where a tier 2 tier 3 tank comes out of the woods and I have light this that and infantry smoke can change everything it can get you closer see I had to, I was just out of range so he ran to the spot lay down they're firing they're firing they're firing now their line of sight is gone they can't see anything in this area this can give you a chance to get your soldiers out of there give I mean use these things guys it's this is one of the best tactics you can get in the game and as you can see I can literally go into the smoke and they can't see anything this could be good for so many different so many different things in this game and it lasts a little while as well smoke out a hole placement move your guys closer uh, get a better position whatever it takes but I'm I, I I can't stress this enough use your smoke it's massive the next thing with your firing if you're used to using the F's F5 F6 all of them if you don't have key bindings and something different you can attack an enemy just normal attack just click on the enemy that you want to attack or you can do attack the ground um, this can be uh, suppressive fire in an area maybe an alleyway it could be used there's a lot of different ways that you can use this uh, if we're gonna be using it against our tanks in a bit as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one soldier right here we're just gonna do this the hard way here all right so this guy right here bless his heart uh, maybe not maybe we'll take that back you're a soldier I want to use more sorry bro it's been fun so as you can see I just killed this guy it's nasty he died it I mean that just sucks right um, so when we get into like when we get into this area right here we have these different commands if a vehicle is is damaged and you press shift R you can automatically go and fix a vehicle that's already broken I I'm more of a clicker I like to click into things uh, there's unless it's something where it's just like an R or something like that usually I do it that way that's just me guys just bear with me on that but uh, in terms of like if you want to fix a vehicle you can just do that let's use this soldier this is what I was kind of waiting for here so I'm gonna use a uh, an AT grenade chucks it boom oh no our tanks just it's not destroyed it's hurt it's injured oh yeah no it's practically they can't use it <laughs> all the all the tank crew is coming out so this is perfect yeah there's a lot of tank crew now these guys if your tank ever does get destroyed guys these guys are key to getting you back on your feet I'm gonna move this soldier out of the way here and I'm gonna move him up so again shift r shift r okay it's not working oh i'm shift r there we go i don't know why i couldn't get it to work so i'm going to click on the actual tank itself here and he's going to start fixing it there are he must have based on the damage from what i can see it probably was the engine that was destroyed or maybe the top so he's going to work on this and while he's working on it, you're going to see a little bar that comes up that's going to show how far along he actually is. You see that little bar? It's so hard to see because he hasn't really done much to it. But there's a little bar down here where my cursor is by his health now. And that's going to slowly fill up and that's him fixing it. Now he has a 50% debuff when it comes to engineering because he's not an engineer and because he doesn't work. He's not a vehicle operator. Now these vehicle operators have 100% in terms of their speed on fixing these vehicles so if you're going to fix a vehicle a lot of times you want to use your tank crew and uh, i will give you we're going to do another guide on that later on but for the sake of this oh that's because let's take him off the job for a moment here and let's get the actual tank guy tank crew to fix this now you might say, well, if that's the case, why not? Why would I want to do this anyway? Well, the cool thing is, is if it's an enemy vehicle that you can recover, you you can recover enemy vehicles. So if you don't destroy it, completely destroy the vehicle, look how much faster he's fixing this thing. His bar is already 25%. 
a third almost yeah so you can see how fast the difference is but if you want to take vehicles off the field you can use any infantry use go down to this middle here and uh, then use the tank repair that will that will repair the vehicle then you can throw any soldier inside of the tank any of these soldiers inside the tank and they will operate it now mind you they're not tankmen so they're not going to be as efficient as your tank crew but they will do the job they will get you that vehicle and i tell you what there's nothing better than on a campaign taking vehicles with you back to base yes you can take them back to base um so he's fixing it and uh yeah now you saw these uh actually as i'm just clicking on this guy he has a bunch of different grenades and stuff as you can see in his inventory uh yeah he can do the smoke he can do the at grenades and so on and let's say for instance though let's go back to our dead guy here poor bastard uh yeah screw it let's just go with this guy so now there's going to be a lot of dead bodies on the battlefield and you're going to run out of ammo on your men and sometimes you have to switch weapons so in the middle here there's this option take right take something off the ground you can pick up dead soldiers and bring them back um and, and the reason for that i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm being honest i know you can pick up dead bodies cool but uh, a lot of this to me is about picking up things on the ground so if i press if i hold down c on your keyboard C you can see all the weapons that are sitting down here and exactly what type of weapon it is this isn't like I said very important if you run out of ammo you're gonna want to use this ability to be able to see everything and you will see in a battlefield you'll see guns all over the dang place but it's so important to get the right weapon so let's say that this weapon we don't have okay if I hold down C I can go up and grab it Okay, he did. Oh, my bad. Here we go. Let's try it again. Nope. Grab that weapon. All right, sweet. So now we have two of the same weapons, but let's just pretend for a second it's not the same weapon. So now if I go into my inventory, if you press I, you can see all the stuff that he's holding on to, all the ammunition. Now this is where the game gets crazy. You can... <laughs> It's kind of like Tarkov in a way. You can go up and you can take stuff off the bodies. So as you can see, as I'm hovering over the body here, there's the icon. Now you don't get this, to be fair, let's back out completely. You don't get this with me just looking at the body. If you press I, you can see what's on your soldier. And you can look at dead soldiers on the ground with a right click. Now this soldier was holding a bunch of drum ammo so he could use like who knows if you have an mg you can grab all that stuff if you need more grenades you can take that off their body if you need bandages you can take the bandages you can just click click and and hover over or you can just do this <laughs> you can just press over one and you can take as much stuff as you can if you don't want that go back you know if you don't want any of your equipment go like this and now he's like he's got nothing on okay so anyways, there you go. That's that's that. This is where it gets interesting because you can come across some really cool stuff. You face like higher squad tier squads. You can switch out. You can get more weapons, double up on weapons. I don't know. The night is young, they say. Uh, so yeah, that's what you can do from here. Also dropping an item. If you have an item in hand, you can just straight up drop it. Inventory here again. If Did he not pick up the weapon? He has his weapon right here. So there we go. Just had to equip it. But let's say you have anything in your hands, whatever is in your hands, you can drop on the ground with B or by pressing the button. Again, you can pick up bodies. You can put them down that way. And yeah, in the middle here, there are other things that we will go over in a different video. Healing, get three med kits. They all have med kits. But if they're not injured, then you, know, you don't need a med kit. You have yourself the mine detectors, you have anti-personnel, AT mines, everything, right? Some of these guys are going to be able to do things, others won't. Uh, like, it just depends on the class. And again, we'll go over that another time. Let's get these guys back inside of the tank. Okay, next one is going to be special options. Special options. Draw and holster. You don't want him to have his weapon out? Don't have his weapon out. If you want him to pull his weapon out, there you go. Now, X is to ex examine, right? 
So this is where we can look at bodies. We can look at we can look at other soldiers and swap stuff out with them. Uh, you can also go up to barrels and be able to look inside of them as well. Now, if there are other objects in the game that will hold contain things, so if I hold down, yeah. So C again. See how there's this barrel that's red? It's empty. But there could be a chance that you come up against something and find something inside of it. For instance, for instance, right here, the repair kit. You can pick up a repair kit. You can do whatever you want with that repair kit. Um, if I look inside of this tank, let's see what we find. Wow, we found ammunition, we found fuel, we found all these things. This is so important, guys, because in a long-lasting battle, if you can't salvage something, you can always take the equipment from it, and you can take all of it. <laughs> you can put it on a soldier and get him the hell out of there. I will say, if he does die, it will be an explosion. So keep that in, oops, keep that in mind. I was hoping he wouldn't come after us. All right. So that's again uh, X, I believe. Yeah, X is to be able to look into everything. You can look into other vehicles. Because sometimes your tank, if this tank has been on the battlefield for a long time, he gets injured a bunch. You can always go over. You can always go over to this vehicle here and take the repair kit out to fix something else. Oh, excuse me. All right. <laughs> I hope you guys are learning something here. Uh, the next thing is uh, emplacements, right? So the emplacement options we'll go over at another time as well. But in terms of the more advanced and so on, uh, you know, you you have yourself a medical tent, which you can use with medics. You have bit tank barriers, small dig foxholes. You have the large dig foxholes. You have the barbed wire. You have uh, small barricade, large barricade, good for blocking stuff. But in general, these are some of the things that you need to understand uh, when you're facing things. Most soldiers on the battlefield also do have these uh, dig foxholes, which we can place. Now, th oh, this is something else. My buddy, uh, when he was playing, we used to play this a while back. Hopefully, we'll get him back into it again. But what you do when you go to place these, first off, you click on it. Now, if I left click, hold down, I can move it in any direction. I have to just hold down your left click and spin your mouse around, right? You can put it in any direction that you want. These foxholes can hold up to about three people into it. I like to put at least two. Three becomes a little crowded and with the wrong unit inside of it, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So let's kind of get this all set up. Okay, foxhole. I'm actually gonna stop him from doing that. And this is where I'm saying like, see how two can get in there, you can put three. You can put three in here, but it just becomes a bit of a mess. I like putting an MG and maybe somebody else in there, but man, I don't know. Yeah, one grenade and goodbye. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I want to bring up would be flamethrowers. What are, what's the deal with flamethrowers, right? They're exposed. They're easy to be killed, so on. Uh, I will be doing a special, uh, spe a separate flamethrower guide, but I do want to use it here because of all the foliage. If you want, like, let's say we take over this base right here, right? We're trying to establish ourselves, but th we're just surrounded by trees. We need to be able to see out into the field, right? What you're going to do is you're going to take your flamethrower guy, and we're just going to burn down the forest. Yes, the game will allow you to burn down trees. Things will light and go into flames. And for a moment, because of the smoke, because of the smoke, you're actually going to have a deficiency in line of sight for a little bit. But with a burned forest comes more opportunities to see out in the distance. Be able to see your enemy. Let's say the forces keep coming, keep coming from over here. You need a clear line of sight. This is how you're going to do it. And yes, if soldiers are too close or they're running through the bush, so you can burn them up. But that coverage is massive. And plus, they have to shoot through trees. I've had it where they go to shoot and they blow up a tree. It's uh, another great setup. Another thing you're going to do with your with your flamethrower, as most people have seen. I mean, anybody who watches movies or understands this before the Geneva Convention. <laughs> you would use these to flame out people inside of buildings well in this game we just like to light things on fire right 
We'll light the whole dang building on fire. Anybody inside cooks, you get the advantage. You can take them down. It's great. But see, here's the thing. They're really dangerous. If these units do die, it's going to blow up and kill a lot of people. So where else can you use these guys? Ambushes. Hiding them in a bush. When something gets close, tanks, so on, you would be surprised. Tanks don't have the best range of view. And when they're already damaged and struggling, they have to choose their target wisely. If you can sneak a flamethrower up, we're going to show you this here. Oh, I ran out of... I ran out of... Flame fuel, darn it. Give me one second, guys. Alright, so now that he's all fueled up, we're going to look at these tanks here, right? So as you hit the tank, the engine's on fire. It didn't take much. Like, you, you will be surprised how fast you can cook these tanks out destroying the engines destroying everything inside of it the soldiers come out on fire right now this is a very this is like your first tank that you're going to come across these guys are all pissed they're like why would you do that to our men <laughs> but as we come over to other tanks here this is more of a medium tank here get one of the bigger ones here obviously behind you're going to do a lot of damage but let's just pretend for a second you're just running up Okay, you just ran up, you're flaming them, you're cooking them, that's it. Engine's on fire, they can't stop it. Let's uh, look at the tank inside of the tank right now. Engine's on fire, they're freaking out. The hull's damaged. This dude just hit, did a freaking spinner rooney and died. They're all just spinner roonering. <laughs> I don't know, what they're having seizures. It's bad, it's real bad. This tank is 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 gone, right? Flame flamethrowers are some of the best in terms of in-town uh, defense. You can literally just hide in a in an area. So I'm gonna start running this down here so that you guys can see how we're setting up. If I'm running them into a town, I want to use them in a choke points. Lay, laying down isn't so bad. Uh, I do like to have them standing or at least crouched But yeah, if you if you get them in a spot and Have them look in a direction like this and you know their soldiers coming right as long as he's able to see in an area He can just light stuff up and again Anybody who comes through here is is just gonna get annihilated. You, I, I think it goes without saying how effective, how strong these guys can be. And I, I highly suggest as well when you're playing for you to manually use these guys because, uh, not to say they do anything wrong. It's just it's just insanely effective. So and it's fun to it's fun to roast people. Um, all right, so yeah. That's really the gist of the basics, I feel like, and some more advanced stuff. I want to hold off a lot of the more, the highly advanced stuff for the individual groups of soldiers. And if you have watched to this point, guys, I thank you so much for, for at least the, you know, sticking around this long. But uh, I do want to just say, you know, as you're playing this game, just keep in mind, Soldiers are pivotal to the battle in terms of just the basic things, the little things, the viewing, being able to see out into a distance, being able to catch an enemy before they catch, uh, before they catch you, uh, just getting the jump on people. You don't have to always use vehicles. I feel like when I play games, this is why I love this game. It's because soldiers are just as important as vehicles, and if you're if you're good at using them. Like, if you know what you're doing, they are devastating. And they can really change the tide of battle. So, yeah. Um, I did bring this tank and I was going to do some more experimenting. But I think I'm going to keep it right there for now. So, guys, if you did like the video, please hit that like and subscribe, guys, for more content like this. I want to see how uh, people take this video, if they do enjoy it or not. And uh, if everything goes good, I'll continue to do Gates of Hell, Call to Arms. So without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Bye.